Hello, and welcome to this presentation on classical education. I'm Jessica Lopez, and I'm the Dean of Classical Humanities for the Roger Bacon Academy. The Roger Bacon Academy is an educational management company who oversees four charter schools in southeastern North Carolina, one in Whiteville, one in Southport, one in Leland, and one in downtown Wilmington. Tonight's presentation will show you just why classical education is the best for your student. The first thing we're going to look at is the word education itself. What is an education? The definition comes straight from the word education. We're gonna break it down part by part. The E in education means exit or out of. The D-U-C comes from the Latin ducere, to lead, and the T-I-O-N or the shun means process. So altogether, education is the process of leading out. In classical education, we are leading students out of the darkness and seeking truth and beauty and goodness in the world. Currently, the United States lags far behind other countries in reading and math, and some may say that we have lost our moral compass. A classical education rectifies both of these. Students who receive a classical education score in the top 15% of all students in, on the ACTs and SATs. And a classical education focuses on virtue when we look at this list, we may think, what do all of these people have in common? What do they have in common? They all have received a classical education. So throughout time, people have received a classical education, have been the leaders in their careers and fields. So on here, we see our founding fathers. We see Martin Luther King Jr. We see Mark Zuckerberg on this list. Mark Zuckerberg is the founder and CEO of Facebook. Some may say, why is Mark Zuckerberg on a classical education list? He received a classical education, which allowed him the wisdom and the knowledge and the creativity to create technology for our future. A lot of parents think that their students need to be attached to a device all the time to keep up with technology because technology is always changing. But in reality, what we have today is gone tomorrow. What's more important is that we're developing students' minds for our future and our country's future. Who are our classical teachers? Classical teachers are general, or people who uh, believe in a classical education. These are generally traditionalists, older teachers, private educator, private school educators, and they are parents. Why are parents on the list? Parents tend to gravitate towards a classical education because of the virtue piece. Classical education builds character and virtue in its students. When did classical education begin? Classical education really began during ancient Greece and everyone was taught classically pre-20th century and it's returning in popularity today. Thousands of students benefit from being classically educated across our nation now. What does a classical education stress? A classical education stresses morals and values. You can overcome your circumstances, and that belief is instilled into a classically educated student. Now we are going to explore the traits of a classical education. Our first trait of a classical education is the rote memorization of facts through repetition. Being able to train your brain to memorize something to fluency. Many of us did that with our math facts. Six times six is 36. That's something that you don't have to think about. But we do that with Latin. We do it with history facts. And it's just like teaching phonics and reading. You learn how to read with phonics, you're able to do it fluently. Being able to memorize 
a lot of information is truly exercise for your brain. The more your brain memorizes, the more it can memorize in the future and it becomes easier to memorize many different things. This also refers to the Roger Bacon Academy's Law II, Teach to Mastery. The second trait of a classical education is reading classical literature, the great books, also referred to as the wisdom of the ages, books that have withstood the test of time. All of these books and novels also teach virtue, central to a classical education. Classical literature builds intellectual muscle power, builds better judgment, reminds us of forgotten ideas, and allows us to connect ideas from the past to today. The third trait of a classical education is history taught chronologically. Could you tell me what were the three types of columns, or capitals, as they were called? AJ. Doric, Ionic, and Corinthian. Very good. Doric, Ionic, Corinthian. Say it with me. Get ready. Doric, Ionic, Corinthian. Very good. Which one was your favorite, Cyrus? Corinthian. The Corinthian. I like Corinthian, too. It's pretty fancy. At the Roger Bacon Academy Family of Charter Schools, we teach history, not social studies. Our history program is broken down into four different cycles, each taught twice while the student is with us. Our first cycle runs from 3500 BC to AD 476, and that encompasses pre-civilization, early civilizations such as Egypt and Mesopotamia, ancient Greece and Rome. The second cycle taught in second and sixth grade is from AD 476, the fall of the Roman Empire, all the way to 1453, the fall of the Eastern Roman Empire or Constantinople. That encompasses the, what is called the Middle Ages. The third cycle is taught in third and seventh grade and that runs from 1453 to 1850. This time period encompasses the Age of Exploration and the founding of the colonies and early republic of the United States. The last cycle is 1850, which is the antebellum period through present day, and that encompasses world and U.S. history. All of this centers around Western civilization. Why? Because history should be taught to pass down one's culture and heritage to the next generation. The fourth trait of a classical education is the teaching of a classical language such as ancient Greek or Latin. At our family of charter schools, we teach Latin. Why do we teach Latin? We teach Latin for many reasons. Latin aids all other subject areas. Specifically, 80% of all English words come from Latin. Second, Latin builds better logic skills. Therefore, a Latin student is better at math. Third, Latin builds a better understanding of English grammar. Therefore, students of Latin become better writers. It deepens their understanding of English. Fourth, Latin focuses on classical cultures. Therefore, students have a broader knowledge of classical concepts and the influence that they have in the United States today, such as our, some of our nation's mottos as a pluribus unum, out of many one, and Novus Ordo Seclorum, New Order of the Ages. In Latin, right hand over your heart, please. Get ready. Euro in Lexilu, Kiwi Patu, Ameri Pride, Fortera Caru, Et in Rem Publicum, Quo Hite to Dictator, Unam Kiwi Patem, Deo Duque. All 50 states also have a Latin motto, such as North Carolina, esse quam we dare, to be rather than to seem. On this slide, we see the four universities in North Carolina. Each university and how many students applied and how many students were admitted, as well as their SAT scores. So we have Duke, 
UNC Chapel Hill, NC State, and UNC Wilmington. As you can see, roughly half of NC State and UNCW's uh, applicants were admitted, and Duke, roughly 4,000 to 5,000 were admitted, and UNC Chapel Hill, around 7,500 were admitted. And you can see the SAT scores for each. This next slide shows you that Latin students boast the highest SAT scores in reading, writing, and math. So here we have the SAT scores of an average Latin student. Then we have SAT scores of a student who took Spanish or French in high school. So if we go back to the previous slide, you can see that a Latin student's SAT scores align with a person who was admitted to UNC Chapel Hill or Duke. So the takeaway from this part of our presentation is that wisdom and virtue are central to a classical education. A classical education allows a student to acquire knowledge and become a more moral person. This corresponds with our first law at the Roger Bacon Academy, reward good behavior, you'll get more of it. In this next part of our presentation, we're going to look at how the, a classical education and classical model is implemented in our classrooms at our Roger Bacon Academy family of charter schools. So a classical curriculum is broken down into what we call the trivium. The first stage is the grammar stage, second, logic, and third, rhetoric. In the first stage, the grammar stage, students memorize rote facts and learn the fundamentals of reading, writing, and math. This takes place in grades K through four. We like to think of this as the tools for learning. I want to hear 3 plus 0 equals 3. 0 plus 3 equals 3. All right, we're not dragging it out. Everyone's tracking fingers. Remember, here we go. Get ready. 0 plus 3 equals 3. Next. 0 plus 4 equals 4. 4 plus 0 equals 4. Next. 0 plus 3 equals 3. Get down. 3 plus 0 equals 3. Next. 4 plus 0 equals 4. We have a we use a phonics based reading curriculum. We learn fluency of facts and math. In history, it's our first cycle in grades one through four and students learn a large amount of geography on the map, and Latin begins in the fourth grade. Here are some of the books that our students read in grades K through four. They are classical novels that have withstood the test of time. They teach virtue, and they're challenging to read. In the second stage is the logic stage. This encompasses grades five through eight. Students reason with facts, elements, and features of liter literature. They create comparisons, and the teacher should always use the Socratic method to lead the students through logic and evidence when analyzing literature and history. So the teacher is still directing the classroom and directing students by questioning them to the right answer. If you kill a mockingbird, it's a sin, number one. Remember, we said that. And so going back to what Mr. Raymond said about that, you know, they'd find out one day, they'd find out what make home really was, and uh, they'd stop crying. It's almost like they are little mockingbirds. In this stage, students are learning how to argue. They're learning how to write well and from different perspectives and they're understanding how and why things happen, especially in science. These are a list of novels and plays that our students read in grades five through eight. These are just some of them, but again, these are all great books that have withstood the test of time, that teach virtue, 
and scholarship to our students. The third stage is the rhetoric stage. This encompasses grades 9 through 12. And truly, students are independent and need little teacher direction by this time. They're thinking for themselves and backing up their opinions with evidence. This would be the high school stage. Lastly, I want to explore our school pledge with you. Each morning, our students recite the Pledge of Allegiance, and then they recite our school pledge together before they start their day. This pledge truly embodies what a classical education is. The first stanza of the pledge reads, I pledge to keep myself healthy in body, mind, and spirit, staying physically fit, mentally awake, and morally straight. This first stanza of the pledge symbolizes a classical education, morally straight and mentally awake. The second stanza reads, I pledge to be truthful in all my works, guarding against the stains of falsehood from the fascination with experts, the temptation of vanity, the comfort of popular opinion and custom, the ease of equivocation and compromise, and from over-reliance on rational argument. The second stanza of the pledge I like to think of as the academic portion. It truly reflects on Roger Bacon himself. Roger Bacon was a monk during the 13th century who developed the scientific method. In this section of the pledge, students pledge to be truthful in all their works, that they should know how to think and not what to think. They're trying to discover the truth for themselves and not just believe what anybody has told them to be true. The third stanza of the pledge reads, I pledge to be virtuous in all my deeds, with the courage to exemplify faith in my beliefs, hope for a better future, and charity towards my neighbor, with prudence in new undertakings, with justice when called upon to judge, with fortitude in the face of adversity, and with temperance toward temptation. This third stanza symbolizes the virtue part of our pledge. Faith, hope, charity are the three central Christian virtues. Prudence, justice, fortitude, temperance are the four cardinal virtues. So there we have the academic portion, the wisdom portion, and in this stanza, the virtue portion. Last, it sums it all up of who they are pledging to. The last stanza reads, I pledge to be obedient and loyal to those in authority in my family, in my school, and in my community and country so long as I shall live. Students not only pledge in the morning to be obedient and loyal and such at school, but they're also pledging to be this way at home in their community and in their country for their whole life. So this pledge, again, is recited each morning after our Pledge of Allegiance. Elementary school students pledge of what is said in bold, and middle school students recite the entire pledge. So in concluding our presentation, I want to just wrap up exactly what classical education is. Classical education provides challenge and wisdom and teaches virtue. All of this is what parents would want for their children. So please enroll your student today in a classical school, like one of our schools in our Roger Bacon Academy family of schools, the Classical Charter Schools of America. And before we go, I want to approach a couple questions that parents frequently have. One of the questions that parents frequently ask is why don't we teach Spanish? We do not teach Spanish because, first of all, a student who knows Latin and is taught Latin can easily access all of the other Romance languages because of their Latin knowledge. So Spanish becomes very accessible to a student who knows Latin. Another question is, do we teach critical race theory 
or identity politics. We do not teach either. We believe that critical race theory, or commonly referred to as CRT, divides us and separates us rather than uniting. We're the United States of America, and therefore we have a lot of commonalities, such as the belief in freedom, individual choice, equality, etc. Critical race theory supports none of those. So we do not teach that. We do teach history, and we teach history exactly as it has happened in the past. And that concludes our presentation. Thank you for listening and watching, and please give your child the gift of a classical education and enroll your child today in one of the Roger Bacon Academy family of charter schools, a classical charter schools of America, enroll today.